Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and help you guys by giving you a somewhat leveling template slash guide for the early league for Ritual. Now this is specifically going to be for the Inquisitor Righteous Fire. Uh, and I just made this character about a few hours ago to test it. Um, this is an SSF character that is going to be naturally buffed in the new league because uh, efficacy starts at a lower level. Scorching Ray has had massive buffs to its cast speed and Inquisitor has gotten slight buffs for this build specifically. So, to go ahead and start, when you first start, I'd recommend grabbing Freeze Pulse. You can use whatever gem you want, I just recommend level 1 Freeze Pulse. Uh, it feels better than most of the stuff I've tried. Right after you do the Breaking Eggs quest, which I believe is in Mudflats, you can grab a Holy Flame Totem, or it's after killing uh, the dude for the Quicksilver Flask. I forgot exactly which one. Anyway, when you get your Holy Flame Totem, you want to support it with Infused Channeling, since there's not really too many supports you can use. If you do not have a blue, you could use Added Fire, so it could work, but you want to aim for a 3-link and then get Phantasm. Phantasm seems really weird because it's like a minion skill, but the mobs have so much base damage at the beginning, they absolutely destroy. And because Holy Flame Totem hits so fast, it will actually constantly recreate them on things like Mervale and Brutus, which is just very good to have. Uh, after Brutus kill, you get Vitality. I would recommend picking this up since you're going to want it ASAP for your Righteous Fire. Uh, and then you've got your Mobility skill. You get Frost Blink somewhere in between, in between here. Just replace that with a Flame Dash. Flame Dash feels much better. Then, moving on, once you get to Mervale, you can get Scorching Ray. In the current setup right now, Scorching Ray feels not very good. I would still stick with Holy Flame Totem, and I forgot to mention, when you get Holy Flame Totem, you will also get Flame Wall. For Flame Wall, you actually don't need to support it with anything. All you're going to do is you want to make it so that your Holy Flame Totem... Um, so let's put this on like, uh, where is it here? You want to make it so that your Holy Flame Totem is shooting into the firewall because it gains bonus damage like that. So an example would be uh, as we're clearing, you know, when we see a pack, we would put the Flame Totem down and then put the Flame Wall somewhere ideally right next to it. And as it shoots, it will gain the amplified bonus of the Flame Wall. You don't have to worry too much. These are going to get replaced very fast. It's just for the simple leveling stages. So... There's that, and this is here. So next up, um, since Scorching Ray is getting massively buffed, I am most likely going to be dropping um, these four setups right here, essentially. Um, and I'm going to be trying Scorching Ray right away. The main reason why is efficacy has been turned to a level 8 support gem, meaning we get it in Act 1. So you can finally actually have a 3-link Scorching Ray. So we would have a Scorching Ray efficacy infused channeling, and that should be enough to get started right away. So I plan on using that. Then, once you get to Act 2, you unlock Herald of Ash. You're going to be using Herald of Ash for a little bit because it gives you more burning damage and more spell fire, which works out really well. Um, after killing Vol, and actually early on into there, you'll get Righteous Fire. You won't really be using RF. If you want to force yourself to use it in Act 2, you can. It will be a little bit of a struggle. Your Scorching Ray should do more than enough damage. Anyway, after killing Vol, uh, you get access to Flammability. I just was manually casting flammability if I needed the damage, although I felt it was okay. You can get Blasphemy from doing Library. Um, library is pretty good because Blasphemy, Flammability, there's not really much you can run on your auras right away. You have Vitality, you have Purity of Fire that comes in Act 3, you have Blood and uh, Flesh and Stone or Blood and Sand, which also for Templar comes out of Library. So for the most part, you don't really have anything, so Blasphemy Flam works until 38. At 38, you get Hex Touch. In which case, you're pretty much up to speed with my current character, and I'll go ahead and show you what I have right now. Um, so, currently, we are running Orb of Storms, Flammability Hex Touch. You get Orb of Storms in Act 1. Orb of Storms is used to trigger your Elemental Equilibrium and your Elemental Overload. Remember, this is a massive damage increase. This is a massive damage increase. Then, on top of that, you've got your RF. So, I currently am running RF with Burn Damage. And on top of burn damage, we are also running elemental focus. If I had a four link, I would run efficacy. For my scorching ray, I am running scorching ray, burn damage, infused channeling. I would put Ellie focus as a fourth link. I like infused channeling because when I'm fighting a boss, as I'm channeling, I gain infusion. Infusion buffs righteous fire. And it's also something you want to get into the habit of getting used to for later in the game. 
For a guard skill that you'd put on left click, I would grab Steel Skin in Act 1. The only thing is, my links are really starved right now, as I'm, you know, SSF gamer at the moment, so I don't have the ability to run that. I did opt out on grabbing an Enduring Cry in Act 1. This works as an instant life flask without having to roll anything, and works really well on bosses. The transition to RF was pretty simple. After the first Labyrinth, when you grab Sanctuary for Consecrated Ground, this massively helps your sustain for Righteous Fire. It makes it so when you're fighting a boss or fighting a rare, you get 6% life regen per second all the time. Pious Path makes it so it lingers, which means it's always following you. If you feel like you're struggling to run RF, simply wait. A 4 link Scorching Ray should do more than enough damage to clear. Wait until your uh, Merc Lab, sorry, not Merc, uh, what's the, Cruel Lab, there we go. Cruel Lab, which gives you Pious Path. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and jump in and go slay Katava or get one shot trying. When you get RF going, that's pretty much the point when I would recommend uh, dropping dual wield. I dual wielded in the early game mainly because the, I didn't need a shield. But now that I have RF, um, a shield is kind of much, much, much more beneficial. And to go on my tree, you can pretty much see our pathing here. Um, I do pick up Firewalker initially, and then I ended up dropping it because I didn't need the fire resist anymore. Um, I also ended up dropping Lighted Divinity. It's a good node, but spell damage doesn't work for RF, and RF is 90% of my clear now. And then at some point, I'm going to go for the three points into Blast Radius. But for now, I beeline to Shadow so that I could grab Growth and Decay, uh, Resourcefulness, and then I'm grabbing Fangs of the Viper and moving over to Coordination. Remember, you don't want to scale too much life because... Vitality is your main source of regeneration, which is a flat amount. With a flat amount, you don't want high life because it, it doesn't affect it. You're just burning more from your HP. And again, the auras I've got right now, Purity of Fire, Vitality, and Flesh and Stone. The one other thing to pick up is you do want to grab Anointed Flesh. It does help a lot with the leveling part, but only when you're actually running your RF. All right, with that being said, let's keep going. Supposed to go in Ossuary for this, right? Yeah. Another option is using Ink AoE. Honestly, Ink AoE is probably the better thing to use instead of efficacy. Um, I would actually super recommend Ink AoE just for the leveling part because the RF AoE is a little small until you get some radius scaling on it. And then that way when you get to a boss, you could just swap out Ink AoE for Conk if you wanted to. Katava, we're coming for you. Wait. Yes, what is it? Chat, I forgot how to play this game. How do you play this game again? I'm supposed to go this way, right? Ah, oh, here we go. Oh, yes. And then you get Flame Golem as well. Sorry, I forgot to add that as another option for regeneration. Another thing is, you really don't have to run RF when you're fighting bosses. You can totally just use Scorching Ray and make use of your 10% max life a second to just essentially face tank the early act bosses but for this i will just be showing you with rf uh and of course three link since we're three link gamers right now um that bleed is very rude there we go three 
three link is unethical. Yeah, I mean, you know, league start, it might be kind of hard to get three links, but you could harvest craft a three link, you know, if you're really struggling. No problem, dude. Easy clap. I must have time to gather my will. No, if you prefer Stormbrand over Orb of Storms, you just use Stormbrand. I'm just used to Orb of Storms. This is gonna hurt. Oh, never mind, we're okay. I'm actually really terrified because of this d -gen. Yeah, man, I mean, and Scorching is going to be much stronger in the patch because for a build like this, we don't really have the points to scale calf speed. So the, the buff to Scorching Ray is like Omega Massive. All right, I mean, that's pretty much it. it you pretty much cruise through your content. RF feels super, super, super good to level. Um, I'll go ahead and go over my gear really fast for you guys just to show you I'm not cheating. Uh, I will upload this scuffed path of building for you guys so you can take a look at it. As for the leveling gems, I'm not going to do anything special with POB. I'm just going to import the character. Is my fire as bricked? Uh, nope. Because purity of fire. I mean, it's not bricked and I'm not even running purity of fire right now. It's also nice because in this tree, you're right next to the witch who gives you fire resist right here. And then a shadow, we get res here. And then we get res here from Holy Dominion. It's very nice. Okay, so to go over the gear, as you can see, I got this amazing Quartz Scepter. Spell damage does not work for Righteous Fire, by the way. Uh, I got this helmet over here. Intentionally, I'm not crafting life on it because I'm not getting one shot. So more life is just harder to manage RF at the moment until I get higher level. I got this Chad Shield. I don't know how I got it. I just crafted and actually got lucky with that life regen roll. Um, not a very good, you know, just nothing very good here. I got this boosted 8.5 life regen ring. Uh, if you can afford two Kikazarus on League Start and you're new, Kikazarus give you really good life regen. Alternatively, Pyre Rings give you really good damage. Um, a chest piece. Yep. Uh, I got some gloves here. Too much life on them. I got a belt. And boots with movement speed. And that's literally it. There's pretty much nothing else. Um, again, to recap, 4 link would be much more damage. And on the actual league start, we'd have a buffed Scorching Ray, which is, like, much better as well. Uh, anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time. I will upload the path of building for you guys in the description and in the comments below in case you miss them. Um, as for the pathing on the tree, if I can remember what I did... Essentially, you skip all regeneration until you're actually running RF. So I believe I started. I do have a PO like a breakdown in the in the original POB, but it's always hard to tell you exactly where you're going because depending on what gear you have, you're going to change different things. So I started right here, moved across into the retribution, um, went down and grabbed discipline of training. Of course, you could come down the precision route, but then to get back over here, you're going to have to go either through AOE. So I grabbed discipline and training. It's really good. Um, from dis discipline and training, I moved across LE damage, Holy Dominion, Lighted Divinity. You don't use AOE for Scorching Ray, so don't get this. And you don't need Sanctity until you run RF. From there, I moved across. One, two, three. I believe from here, I actually beelined and rushed Elemental Equilibrium and just used Orb of Storms. 
mainly because I was not using Holy Flame Totem uh, and I was using Scorching Ray, so that's why I rushed Elemental Equilibrium here. After the Elemental Equilibrium rush, I spent three points over and grabbed Arcanist Dominion. Then I went and grabbed Firewalker because for Scorching Ray, this is a lot of damage. From here, I grabbed two points into Heart and Soul. Then I moved north. I dodged Elemental Overload. I got Holy Fire first. Then I grabbed Elemental Overload. Then from there, um, I'm pretty sure it was just Mana and Life, Deep Wisdom. I think my Mana regen was really shit, so I grabbed Arcane Will. Instead of grabbing Arcane Will, because this is kind of overkill on regen, you could just grab Shaper, which is what I'd recommend so you don't have to respec, because Shaper you're going to grab for RF anyway, and then you still get the 1% life regeneration. From here, you're probably getting ready to run RF, so this is when you can just type in regen. So you've got Sanctity, you've got Shaper, you've got your maximum resistances over here. You could grab Quick Recovery. Uh, this is another okay option, but it does give you max life. Then scrolling onward, you can see I did the beeline to shadow. Um, over here, I grabbed growth and decay. Then down here, I grabbed lethal assault for some AoE and damage. Then resourcefulness. From here, we go fangs of the viper. We move across and I hit coordination. After I hit coordination, I'm most likely going back and grabbing quick recovery. And then from there, you know, the, the rest of the tree should be on the POB from what we're doing. Um, since we don't have cluster jewels, obviously we're not theory crafting right now with cluster jewels. So we do have a tree that is specifically set up for non cluster jewel scaling. Uh, and then I'll want to grab the three AOE points in the blast radius. Anyway, that's pretty much it. That summarizes pretty much everything I could tell you guys. Take care. Have a wonderful time. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays. Although maybe I'll stream Sunday for League Start at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care, everybody.